This is a Porsche Boxster, arguably one of the most iconic cars of the last few decades. Now today, I'm gonna to take the fear out of buying one of these wee beauties for you by covering all the common problems, everything that tends to go wrong, so you can go out there and buy the best example possible. Let's go. Right, let's pause because there's one problem that is spoken about so commonly on these Boxsters, I feel we just need to address it immediately, and that is the IMS bearing. So IMS stands for intermediate shaft, and it's this shaft that the bearing is meant to hold in place. Spoiler alert, it doesn't always do it very well. Answer me this though, why does that then lead to complete engine failure? Well, as that bearing starts to become worn, it allows that intermediate shaft to move about just enough that it throws the engine timing off, which obviously is gonna lead to engine failure eventually. Now, to make matters worse, there's no real warning of this problem. Well, there is one symptom, and that is little gold flakes in the oil and in the oil filter because the actual shell of the bearing is gold. Well, not gold, but gold in colour. You know what I mean? So, Grant, what are you telling us here? To avoid buying one of these cars because of this issue? No, absolutely not. All I'm saying here is it's important to understand the problem. And on that note, it's also important to know that Porsche actually swapped out this troublesome bearing halfway through the Boxster's development and build. And it was actually the other way around from what you might expect, because if you bought one of these Boxsters in 1997 to 2000, it used a double row bearing. Now, if you bought one after 2000, it used a single row bearing. Now, the double row was much better because the failure rate of that was actually underneath 1% of the cars built. Now, 2000 onwards, that's when things became a little bit more troublesome, and that failure rate jumped to about 8%. Now what's interesting about this is the more seldom used, easier going cars tended to have more problems than those that were driven a little bit harder. One theory behind that is the cars that were driven that little bit harder had more oil flow going around the engine because of the higher RPMs, which meant better lubrication for that troublesome bearing. This is also why a lot of owners opted to scrap Porsche's recommended 12,000 mile service schedule and went to a 5,000 mile service schedule because that bearing is lubricated by the engine oil. And if you've got a lot of crud floating about in there, it's not gonna help matters. Now throughout its life, the Boxster had four different engines. Let's take a quick look. So it all starts with the OG engine, the 2.5 litre from 1997 until 1999, when it was replaced by the 2.7 litre engine. Bit more power, and this ran up until 2002, in parallel with the 3.2 litre that's found in the Boxster S. Now both of these engines were upgraded in 2002 to get a bit more power, and the final engine that you'll find fitted in a 986 Boxster is the special edition 500 Spider engine, which again, had a little bit more power. Welcome back. On to the next super common problem that we tend to see with these cars. Now this isn't a complete showstopper, but again, something that you're gonna want to be aware of, and that is the rear main seal, or RMS for short. Now what this is, is effectively a little seal that sits between the engine and the gearbox. Now that seal's job is to hold back the oil, stop it from leaking it doesn't work very well a lot of the time. They tend to dry up, and again, those more seldom used cars will suffer from this a little bit more because that seal isn't getting constant lubrication. Now, when it dries up, it starts to leak. Is it worth fixing? Well, it depends how badly it is leaking oil. A lot of owners will just accept that it's leaking a little bit and do it when the clutch next gets done. However, it's gonna depend on how bad the leak is and how much you value your clean driveway. So one real important aspect of your new Boxster, something that makes a Boxster a Boxster, is obviously this convertible roof. Now one thing to speak of is this rear screen that we've got here. It's going to depend on the year of Boxster that you buy, but pre-2003 it's going to be made of plastic. Now this one's in perfect condition as you can see, but a lot of the time these can go a bit hazy and even start to crack if they're not treated correctly. Post-2003, it got replaced with a glass screen. Now, if I may, I'd like to take 20 seconds just to thank the guys who made this film impossible today, and that is Crookies Customs Detailing. Now, the clues in the name, these guys specialize in detailing as well as other modifications like window tinting. If you're looking to have anything done to your car, I would fully recommend them. I'll add the details in the description below. 
Now that rear screen is one thing, but what about the roof itself? Well, it goes without saying, you want to have a good, careful, general check over the condition of it. Any rips, any tears, it's gonna be really expensive to try and get that sort of thing sorted. Now, one thing that can happen on these roofs as well is they can jump out of alignment slightly. The telltale of that is when the roof is going down and seats in the rear of the car, you sometimes hear a popping sound. It's quite unique as it jumps back into alignment. Now, if that's the case, don't be putting that roof up and down anymore until you get it to a specialist and get things realigned because you keep going with that, you're really gonna break it. So next up, get yourself in this rear hatch here just behind where the engine sat because what we've got here is the main coolant tank now these can sometimes crack and apart from having low coolant we'll be able to see that by the way it tends to soak the carpet in here as well now not the end of the world we can swap these out pretty easily but again bring it into the negotiation save yourself a bit of money so as we hop into this interior, first thing to check is when you pull that door handle, make sure the window drops down a little bit. It does so, so that it clears the roof. Now, if it's not dropping down, there's little micro switches that control these and it's probably gone bad. They're pretty common for going bad. So if that window ain't dropping, the price better be because it's gonna come out of your pocket to get fixed. So hopping into this interior, really there's not too much to tell you about in here. It's all typical Porsche quality. And even now, things have worn well on this 100,000 mile example. Things look great in here still, honestly. The one thing that I would mention is be aware of some of the options that these boxers came with. On more modern cars, we've become so accustomed to having things fully loaded from these slightly older cars Things like our Xenons and our cruise control and such, they were not standard on these Boxsters. So if there's something you want specifically, double check that it's actually on the car that you're buying. So something else to mention is on the front of the Boxster, we've got these lovely sculpted lines. Unfortunately, however, we've got a problem with these because these grills here, although they look really good, they have a bit of a built-in design flaw and it is that they tend to catch all the leaves and sort of debris off of the road. Now what happens is it gets kind of compacted in there up against the radiators and the AC condenser and it can cause them to rot out. So number one, we're looking for any, any leaks up front and number two, have a look to see if it is full of leaves and debris. If it is, chances are they're probably holding the radiator and the AC condenser together. So as we get towards the test drive on your Boxster that you're looking at, hopefully all is going well so far, pay attention to cold starting. A little puff of grey smoke, pretty normal. Nothing to sweat about on these cars. But if it's prolonged, if it keeps going, that could suggest that the air oil separator is going bad and is going to need swapped out. Now the other thing to be aware of as well, I think mainly just due to the positioning of them and the heat off of that engine, Coil packs are also another really common area on these Boxsters. What happens is they expand, they contract, just with the heat cycle of the engine, and eventually you will see little micro cracks on them and they fail. Now, thankfully that's gonna be real easy to spot if you're looking at a car, because it's gonna be running pretty rough. Now on the test drive of your new Boxster, don't get carried away. I know it's a cool experience getting behind the wheel finally, but there are a few things to check. Get on that throttle and watch for any hesitation during acceleration. Dirty or failing air mass flow sensors are pretty common on these cars now, and it will cause that hesitation on acceleration. Now the next thing is bear in mind that clutch changes are a part of life with these cars. They're getting a bit older and it's a really, really labor intensive job. So get into a slightly higher gear, floor that throttle and make sure that the revs are rising proportionally to the propulsion of the car. In other words, make sure the revs aren't shooting through the roof while the car goes nowhere. And finally, be on the listen out to the suspension. Any squeaking coming from it suggests that some of the bushes are going bad. Now really, these have only got a service life of about five or six years, so you can expect to be swapping them out pretty frequently. That is a common service item. But again, bring it up with a seller, save a bit of money so you can put that box start back to how it deserves to be. And there you have it. You now have all the tips you need 
to go off and find yourself an amazing Porsche Boxster. But don't click off of this video just yet, hang around and see how it scores on a reliability leaderboard. So then, the 986 Boxster, what are you getting for your money? Well, to me personally, I think you're getting an extremely iconic, appreciation ready, modern classic. I think it's a heck of a lot of car for less than 10 grand. There are a few reliability considerations, few problems in there, but that's why we make these videos, so you can go out there and buy the best examples possible. So with all that in mind, we award the Boxster, considering its age, a really rather respectable seven out of 10 on a reliability leaderboard. Now, thank you so much for watching. Please do hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and we'll see you next time.